How's it going, everybody? My name is Nick. I also go by Golden Guy, and I'm your coach of the Philadelphia Pincers. And we're coming back to you with a UNPL Main League matchup. This is week one, and we are taking on none other than Grandmaster D-Ray and his San Diego Spirits. Uh, I've been looking forward to playing D-Ray for the longest time now. We've been in a couple of leagues, or like minor leagues, together. So summer Scramble, Spring Fling, so on and so forth, and we've never gotten the opportunity to actually face off. Well, that time is now, and I am super excited. I've been a longtime follower of D-Ray, and I'm just super excited to get into this match. So, that being said, let's just jump straight into the matchup and talk about what our opponent has, what we have, and yeah, just the matchup in general, guys. Let's see it. So, oh, that's my bad. All right, D-Ray has an incredibly powerful team. Of the 11 Mons that he could have drafted, he decided to use all of his points for nine, which means they are nine very good Mons. Um, he started off the draft with a Great Tusk, which is probably one of the best rapid spinners in the meta this gen. It's super bulky, can hit super hard with things like Headlong Rush and just a plain old Earthquake, close combat, so on and so forth. Could also be just super bulky and take hits for days on the defensive side. Uh, we have to watch out for a booster energy from Great Tusk to see if it's going to be that uh, speed boosting set, which means it does not have any attack investment, or if it's going to be some kind of like attack, attack boosting or defense boosting set, because that could just tell us what we need to know when we come in against it. Next up, they have Zapdos. Zapdos is also incredibly strong. Uh, it's a good defensive wall to a majority of my team, given that it can just rock the Rocky Helmet item and then the static ability and pair of things as it sees to as it sees fit it could also just fire off hurricanes against my team because i don't really have a resist outside of terra steel articuno or just leaving a colossal as a rock type uh can't necessarily bring scissor in on it because it gets access to heat wave roost makes allows for longevity and then it's got great pivot uh momentum and u-turn and bolt switch then d-ray also has weavile who hits incredibly hard on that physical offensive side, and it hits incredibly hard into my team. Uh, if my team gets whittled down, then something that we have to watch out for is a late game Weavile, because we might not be able to do anything about it at that point once we are weakened. Empoleon is also on the team. Great Stealth Rocker it does not have access to Defog, but it has the competitive ability. I don't think the competitive ability is going to help so much in this matchup, because I don't really have like an Intimidate user or the means of parting, parting, to use Parting Shot to get around, so on and so forth. And I don't think that Empoleon's matchup honestly looks the greatest here, unless it goes some kind of like Agility Weakness Policy set. So it would have to be super offensive for that to work out in my opponent's favor for this match. But the next one on the list, Gengar, does look pretty good into my team as a special breaker. Slap a Choice Scarf on it, slap some Choice Specs on it, hits incredibly hard, does outspeed all of my team minus the Latio. So Choice Scarf makes a lot of sense so that it can't because I don't want to risk a speed tie, right? And I do think that it can hit incredibly hard. It has a very versatile move pool, access to things like Shadow Ball, Sludge Wave, Thunderbolt, Psychic, can even trick away whatever choice item it has. Next up is the Sylveon. Can be bulky on either the special side or the physically defensive side. Wish Pass, Wish Protect, Hyper Voice Spam. Yeah, my... Um, I have three Fairy Resist on my team, and Scizor, Tentacruel, and Colossal. But I don't think that Sylveon is enough for me to warrant to bring like all three of them when I have to pay attention for the other Mons on the team. Then D-Ray also has access to Deoxys Defense. Super bulky, can set up Spikes, Stealth Rocks, spam my team with Thunder Wave, access to Nightshade and Seismic Toss. Um, 
or it could be some weakness policy setup set, in which case I struggle, like if it wants to just run stored power at that point. My dark type is Crawdon, it's not the most physically bulky, so he could just whittle down the Crawdon with maybe a Focus Blast, or just pick any other move really, Thunderbolt, things of that nature. His two characters are the Braviary and the Go-Goat. I don't think either of these make a lot of sense into my team. Braviary makes a little bit more sense if it wants to go Terra Flying and just spam Flying type attacks, but I do think that there are six better mons on my opponent's team against me, and I don't think either Terra Captain should come. And then last but certainly not least is that Go-Goat with the options of Water, Ground, or Steel. If we do see Go-Goat, I don't necessarily know which Terra it wants to be against my team. Steel means that it gets wrecked by Earthquake from Mammoth Swine. Water is probably the best choice, but then um, Iron Hands deals with it fairly easily. And then Ground, obviously, uh, Mammoth Swine beats that, and so does the Tentacruel. So my opponent would have to pick their poison, and I just don't see a really good Go-Goat set into this matchup when I have walls just these normal Go-Goat sets that we typically see. That being said, let's jump into the team that we're bringing, why we're bringing each thing. First up is our first round pick, and that is going to be the Latios. We're coming straight out the gates with, with, with the weakness policy set, boys and girls. Uh, stored Power, Aura Sphere, Shadow Ball, and Agility are going to be our four moves. After one Agility, we outspeed any Scarfer on the team. And with the defense investment that we have, we can live the knockoff, the ice move from Great Tusk. We can live anything that's not Triple Axle from Weavile, get our weakness policy procced, and just attack from there. Anything else on the team that wants to hit us super effectively, we should be able to agility up against and get the weakness policy and then just start going in. Shadow Ball is only there for Deoxys, um, otherwise I was having a real tough time trying to hit it. But you have to go with something sometimes. I wish I had maybe like some kind of defense boosting move right there. It would make a lot more sense, but I needed the Shadow Ball for that Deoxys. Next up is Big Mammoth Swine, rocking the Icicle Crash, Earthquake, Heavy Slam, and Trailblaze. Honestly, I want to just start hitting things with Trailblaze just to boost my speed. Between Icicle Crash and Earthquake, I hit a majority of the team really hard, and then Heavy Slam is there for the Sylveon primarily. And I guess also the Weavile if I need it to be there. Uh, 252 attack, adamant, we're just hitting things as hard as we can. The Salt Vest allows us to live any special attacks our opponent really wants to go for. Like, say if Empoleon comes and it is a special set, it allows us to live the Serps, the Hydro Pumps, uh, allows us to live moves from Sylveon a little bit easier so that we can get a Trailblaze off or and Heavy Slam it after that or something along those lines. Thick Fat was really the best ability here. Oblivious didn't make much sense. Snow Cloak we can't use. Um, but Thick Fat allows us to, I guess, live the ice type attacks from Weavile a little bit better, assuming my opponent does not have Low Kick or something packed for the Mammoth Swine. Then we've got Tentacruel. Gunk Shot, Surf, Rapid Spin, and Flip Turn with the Shooka Berry. The Shooka Berry allows us to live any at least two headlong rushes from the Great Tusk. Um, so that we can knock it all, knock it out with Surf. If it's a more offensive Great Tusk, then as soon as they go for the headlong rush, we hit Surf, and we live the, we live with the Sugar Berry, sorry, and then we Surf to knock it out, assuming that they're not like a Salt Vest or something. Uh, Liquid Ooze is there just in case uh, D-Ray wants to get spicy and bring the Go Goat because they can't set up a Leech Seed against us because they're just going to be getting damaged over time. They can't Horn Leech us, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, that's what the Tentacruel is here to do. Uh, we are we have the Gunk Shot there specifically for the Sylveon, which we do two hit KO, even if it has leftovers with the set that we have. Then we've got Sinistra. Macha Gacha, Shadow Ball, Strength Zap, and Calm Mind. Uh, we should be able to get some Calm Minds up against something on the team. Whether that be the Great Tusk, the Deoxys Defense, uh, anything that really isn't uh, super offensive. And 
Sinistra has the potential to win the game as soon as we get some Calm Minds up. Uh, we are at a defensive stat to where we can live a triple axle, strength sap the Weavile, and get all that HP back as it loses its attack stat, assuming that it's not like Clear Amulet or something along those lines. Cold Berry allows us to live the dark type attacks from the Weavile, a knockoff from uh, Great Tusk, and Heat Proof was really, I mean, I guess the best ability, just in case they pack fire moves on something, but I, it, the other move, uh, Hospitality, didn't make much sense because obviously we're not playing doubles. Then we've got our fifth member of the team in Iron Hand. Big Iron Hands here with a Swords Dance can take out pretty much anything on the team. Punching Glove allows us to get that little bit of oomph damage against something like the Zapdos. We could probably, I think we can 1v1 it with Drain Punch at that point, assuming that Zapdos does miss some Hurricanes. Uh, and it makes sure that we are not getting Rocky Helmet damage, or taking Rocky Helmet damage. We obviously can't get Static because we are an Electric type. Uh, Drain Punch is there just for Stab. Ice Punch is there for things like the Great Tusk and uh, Zapdos. And then Heavy Slam is obviously there for uh, Weavile, not Weavile, I'm hitting Drain Punch in front of Weavile. For the Sylveon, it does uh, Oko a Gengar after a Sword Stance. And then last, but certainly not least, is our dedicated lead and the last pick of our draft. And that is Big Crawdont with a Focus Sash. Yep, we're bringing Focus Sash lead Crawdont first week of the season. Uh, we are going to knock off anything that's in front of us except for a Sylveon, turn one. If it's Sylveon that's sitting in front of us, we're hitting Crab Hammer. Um, hopefully we should be faster than we're faster. Minimum Go Goat, I believe, I remember, is what I remember. And yeah, we hit, knock off, or Crab Hammer, take something down to all the way, take it down to really low, pick it off with either Aqua Jet or knock off or Crab Hammer again if we need to. On the following turn, we could even endeavor if we expect our opponent to switch out. That's the team that we're rocking with against D Ray this week. Hopefully, we can pick up a win in this week one matchup. I'm looking really, I'm looking forward to it a lot. All right, it looks like we have gotten connected here with D-Ray. So, let's get this battle on the way and see what my opponent decided to bring. Great Tusk. <laughs> okay. Great Tusk. No Weavile. Great. Flabbergasted. Zapdos. He did bring the Empoleon. Okay. Flex on me. Sylveon. Gengar. And go Goat. I am thoroughly surprised. I got four of them. No Deoxys. No Weavile. It's, that is super interesting. Okay. Uh, Empoleon up there. I'm just gonna go ahead and lock in before I forget. Okay. So we are definitely leading crawled on. There is no lead in the world that would make me think otherwise. So crawled on's the lead, and my opponent decides to bring Go Go to this match. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I did put Liquid Ooze on the tentacruel just in just in case. And Polion being here is interesting. I don't think I don't think it has a great matchup. I mean, it does lead decently well into my Crawdon. Um I guess, but I can just knock it off. And then see what it wants to do from there. But we said good luck, have fun in the chat. We spelled out it. We spelled out the whole thing. So let's get this match on the way. I'm super excited about this. Like I said, I've been looking forward to playing D-Ray for a while, and we do get an Empoleon lead. All right, cool. Knockoff is doing a ton of damage, no matter what. So that's what we're going for. Knockoff to a slightly defensive no. To, like no bulk Empoleon is doing at least or close to 
if it is like max HP, max defense, we are doing at least 50%, which I will take that every day of the week. My opponent can get up rocks fairly easily here, um, but I'm not too worried about that. I can just bring in uh, Tentacruel to spin them away. Gengar is an, obviously, is an obvious switch in. Okay, so they do decide to just switch out of the Empoleon out into Jackson. This is probably Vincent Jackson. It looks like San Diego, or uh, er, sorry, Los Angeles Chargers names. This knockoff's coming off and is doing a good amount. And <laughs> I had a feeling that this could be Specs and uh, Specs Sylveon just because I've been watching D-Ray for a while and I know that he loves this Specs Sylveon. Um, all that being said, you don't want to take this crab hammer, my guy. You do not want to take this crab hammer. So that told me that he was zero HP, zero defense. Based on the amount of damage we did, yeah. We're just gonna crab hammer here. And claim one. It is as simple as that. You can bring back, okay, the Don pass out. Okay, what are we getting? Zapdos coming in. Rocky Helmet Zapdos could be a thing. And it would break our sash and allow him Junior Sail. Is this gonna be the Zapdos? No, it's gonna be the Go-Go, okay. That did 30-ish percent, and we do knock off the Rocky Helmet. Um, Go-Goat into Crawdont. No, we just we hit the Crab Hammer. Okay, yeah, that's right. I'm going to go straight out into uh, Tentacruel here and see what my opponent wants to do <laughs> to kind of withdraw. Okay, are we going to hit a move, D-Ray? Come on. Jackson comes back out. Sylveon, okay, I'll take it. Sylveon in against Tentacruel. This probably tells him that I am uh, Liquid Ooze is my ability if I'm willing to bring in Tentacruel so easily on the Go-Go. But that is perfectly fine with me. I'm just gonna gunk shot here. I mean, you can go out into Empoleon for free, and that is certainly your prerogative. You could think that I just want to flip turn out. So we have not seen anything other than a Rocky Helmet on the Go-Goat. And this thing was choice specs, but it's no longer. Antonio Gates, and that's gonna be the Empoleon. <laughs> okay. Come on, D-Ray. Get a move. I need to see more of these sets. I am going to flip turn out of here. Flip turn out. That's looking like a defensive Empoleon. We should be faster with our uh, crawl down here. Uh, Iron Hands was also pretty free there. Okay. Flip turn out on. So we got flip turn on the Empoleon. We were sitting at 84% prior to that. So we were at like 224, okay. And we're now down to 193. So that did 12% off of the flip turn, just so I can gauge what we're looking at. And that's looking like a zero attack, minus attack nature, uh, and pulley on. So Zapdos is here and can easily just go for a Thunderbolt. You could read that and want to hit like a Hurricane or a U-turn or something. I think I'm fairly free to go out into Grandmaster D-Ray himself in the Mammoth Swine and 
and see what kind of damage we are looking at from this. Hurricane would be doing about 40%, discharge comes off and that's perfectly fine. So this thing, Zapdos, does not really want to take an icicle crash all that well. Um, and Polion could come in, that's fine. So I do think that I can just Icicle Crash relatively free and see what kind of damage we're doing. Empoleon should be coming in. Go-Goat doesn't want to take this. Sylveon doesn't want to take this. That's fine. The Empoleon is in. It's quad-resisted Icicle Crash. It does absolutely nothing. But, I mean, I think I just hit Earthquake here, right? I'm going to hit Earthquake. I'm just going to attack what's in front of me right now. I don't want this Empoleon in here. And if he wants to bring back out Zapdos or the Go-Go, that is certainly fine. Um, I don't know. So this go Goat could be Water, Ground, or Steel. I think I bring in <laughs> a Tentacruel on it every time until I figure out what it is. We just have to keep applying the pressure. And the fact that... Crawdont is potentially faster than three Mons on this team is still fantastic because we can still get off some really big damage against those three as they withdraw. Okay. He's just scouting out my sets. This is the Go-Go? No, this is Sylveon. Okay, I think that's a dead Sylveon. The Earthquake comes out. Yep, Mammoth Swine's claiming a kill here as Sylveon goes down. So now Crawdont is faster than two Mons on the team, supposedly, in, in the Empoleon and the Go-Goat. Junior, Se Junior Seau comes back out, and that is going to be the Go-Goat. This leads me to think that he is Terra Water. Uh, Go-Goat. Terra Water. I think I'm fine just to go back out into Tentacruel, to be honest with you. Tentacruel's not really doing all that much in this matchup. Uh, as since the Sylveon went down. So we are going to see a Terra. Is it ground? Is it water? I think it's going to be water based on the way that he brought it in against Mamoswine. It is water. So we do can now remember that. Tentacruel is in. Beach Seed comes off. You're not going to like what comes out of that. Just saying. You can take my health down, but you're going to be losing some with me, buddy. Yep. <laughs> Alright. So, you can stay in. I can just flip turn out and potentially see what my opponent wants to do. Okay, they're gonna stay in. Rocky Helmet is there, we knew that. Um, let's see. Um, um, um. Horn Leech wouldn't make sense because they just saw that I was Liquid Ooze. They could go for a ground move, potentially, and like, Earthquake. Let's just go out into Dapper Snapper, the Sinistraw right now, against this Go-Goat. I know that he's probably Sap Sipper, Milk Drink comes off, that makes a lot of sense. Let's just set up a Calm Mind right here. Or do I predict the Zapdos to come out? That could also be a thing. I mean... Hmm. Let's just set up a Calm Mind, show them that we mean business. Zapdos should be coming out here. It could, I guess, be the Empoleon. I don't really think so. That's going to be the Empoleon. Okay. So we are just going to set up to uh, plus one plus one against this Empoleon. We want to make sure that we are not hitting 
um, what's it called? Uh, strength sap against the Empoleon. I can call mind again and be perfectly fine. Because if I calm mind, then I think Empoleon's in range of a Shadow Ball. Maybe? No, not quite. Let's just Calm Mind again. And so, Calm Mining allows us to see more of this Empoleon set. Could be Roar is something to look out for. It's not Leftovers, so Ice Beam comes off. Shouldn't be doing too much, yeah. And we can just go for the Shadow Ball here. We might be able to... Okay, that's... Maybe AV? Okay. Shadow Ball again. Because I don't want a Macha Gacha because I don't want the Go Go to come in and take the damage. Or, and use the Sap Sipper. I don't think that mattered. Um, so I think it was AV, Ice Beam. I really don't know. So if you were a Sol Vest, did that matter based on the damage that we did prior? You were at 75%, you went down to 30? I don't think so. I, I really don't think so. If it did, I am so sorry. Um, but based on my calcs, I don't think that mattered. Gengar could come in. Great Tusk could come in. Zapdos can come in. Anything can anything has the potential to come in depending on the set. This is Ladanian, so this is gonna be the like Zapdos, okay. What is the Great Tusk name? Curious. Mm. I think that I am not ready to give this up. And I don't think I live a hurricane, assuming they connect. So I'm going to just go straight out into Amoswine and just fire off. I already showed that I have the Icicle Crash, so why not just go for it? I could go for a Trailblaze this turn to make sure that I'm faster than a Great Tusk. Okay, you'll see that I am... You are offensive. My friend, you are very offensive. Mammoth Swine against. Took us down to 186. That's 48%. Yeah, here. Max special attack? Yeah. Max special attack. Um. Let's just. Let's just hit what's in front of us. Icicle crash in probably into this go goat if I had a guess. Junior say, oh, that's gonna be the go goat. Yep, icicle crash into it. Do we hit ourselves? Come on. Yep, we hit ourselves. That's unfortunate because that means that the Zapdos can just fire off another. Um, uh, damn it, what's it called? The Zapdos can fire off another Hurricane pretty freely. Go Goat. Into Tentacruel. Yep, and this is probably the Zapdos again, if I had to guess. The Danian, yep, that's gonna be the Zapdos. We know that it's max special attack. Nope, that's the Zapdos out here. Zapdos, smack special attack, discharge, we're at 250, discharge has some rolls to kill, but not many. Let's see. Thunderbolt would kill, discharge does not, so it has three rolls to kill. So I think... This should be faster than me, and I can just flip turn out. Yep. 
Okay, we do live. And we are able to flip turn out. Fantastic. So I could go into Iron Hands here, I think. And just... Hmm. Yeah, let's just go into Iron Hands and set up a Sword Stance. Or should I just attack it? I mean, Ice Punch is fairly free into anything. This is sitting at right below 75%. Oof. But I don't want to take two Hurricanes, potentially. Let's just set up a Sword Stance. See if they want to go out. They don't... This should scream that I have Ice Punch. Who are we getting? Bill of Rivers. Great Tusk. Great Tusk. Alright, it's not Booster. It is not Booster, and we're sitting at plus two. So, the fact that it's not Booster means that it's only doing like 50 ish percent to us. And probably not max HP. Let's sh oh no, nope, that's probably super wrong. Yeah, and that's gonna kill. Let's just sack off the tentacle. I know that the tentacle is really the thing that's keeping the Gogo at bay, but I also don't think the Gogo can touch Sinistra. So we'll just sack off the. Yep, so it does have Earthquake. Good to know. Probably not Headlong Rush. So as soon as Jot kills the Empoleon, yep. I am just gonna go straight out here and I'm gonna set up an Agility right now. I think this is where we can set up pretty free. Um, Tentacruel goes down. So yeah, let's just agility up. Gengar can come in. And really doesn't want to take a hit from Lottie. I could easily, I should be able to easily knock it out here. Okay, yep, withdraw. Out into who? Lorenzo Neal, that's going to be the Gengar. Shadow Ball should not kill us. Unless you are... Choice Specs. That is the only role in which Shadow Ball kills. So... I can just... I'm just going to store power here. Okay, we are faster. Knock it down to 25%. Sludge Bomb comes out. And they do get the poison. That's kind of unfortunate, but it's okay still. Okay, so it's Black Sludge. Interesting. Interesting, for sure. I'm just going to use this to break, I guess. Yeah, I think that's what I can do. Just stored power things until... So Lottie picks up a kill against Gengar. Gengar goes down. Zapdos can come in here relatively free.
Sinistraw can always strength sap up against Great Tusk still. Crawdont can deal with the Go Goat. And Iron Hands can still deal with the Zapdos. So I think just getting some chip off on some things would be nice. Hill of Rivers is the Great Tusk. Perfectly fine. Let's just. So Great Tusk is here. I mean, they can play the switch around game all they want. I'm just going to store power for damage. Lots of damage right there. Ice Spinner comes off. Okay. So Great Tusk picks up a kill against Lottie. Let's get Lottie off the layout. So that thing was sitting relatively low, which means that Crawdont should be able to come in and just pick it off with an Aqua Jet if I need it to. I don't think that Mamo is faster. No, it's not, okay. So I can just go out here into Sinistraw. And we saw the Ice Spinner. Which from here should not be doing a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. So I think I can just Strength Sap, mm -hmm. even though the Go-Go is fairly obvious right here. I'm not worried about raising the Go-Go's attack because they can't Leech Seed in front of me. And I can just take it out with Crawl on. Okay. Ladanian is the Zapdos, right? Yeah. So this Zapdos is sitting at 75%. Gets us back up to a decent amount. They have to go for Hurricane. Right? Which means that I don't want to take the Hurricane with Iron Hands at this point. Mammoth Swine isn't doing much. I think I have to risk this for some damage, but I can call mine on the off chance that Hurricane misses and it does not. Okay, that's my bad play then. Oh man, I try to <laughs> make a gutsy call and it bites me in the ass. And I feel like that's just the, how it's been going recently. And that's perfectly fine. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Um, Bringing out Iron Hands here. And I am just going to Ice Punch. Knock Off should kill the Go Goat potentially. Or some chip into Go Goat. Is this the Iron Hands? Or is this Junior Sale is the Go Goat? Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's see what we got here. Iron Hands versus Go Goat. Water. If I go plus two, and then Drain Punch is getting me some health back. Aqua Jet still kills the Great Tusk. Or should, at least, based on the damage that we did. And setting up to plus two here should net us positive, I think. Because we can drain punch this twice and still live a hurricane from the Zapdos. 
Clayro comes out. That does some big damage. It is faster than us. Which is weird. Go go. So he has some speed investment, which means that Crawldont will not outspeed the go go. Drain Punch here to get some health back. It could be a speed tie, I guess. Maybe. If it's a speed tie, then we're golden. <laughs> But I don't think, I think he just, he probably expected me to uh, speed creep the Go-Goat. Maybe, but I didn't think that Go-Goat had good viability. Leech Seed comes off, that's fine. We'll just Drain Punch here. And get our health back, yep. Good damage. Play Rough has a chance to miss. So that could happen. Uh, Drain Punch will kill this. It'll get significant damage off on the Zapdos. Milk Drink comes off, that's fine. Because I think we just, I think we should be netting positive. No, okay. So he is going to try and stall us out. If I go plus two again, like if I go to plus four, then we should be fine. I think. But then we don't live to play rough, or then we don't live a play rough, right? So here, I just have to. I have to hope he milk drinks, right? That's the play, he play rough. Okay. But we still, okay, I don't think that did less than the first time, but that's fine. So we'll be at plus three and not plus four. And we can just drain punch and get health back. Drain punch here. He has to keep going for attack drops to make this worth the trade-off. Terror Blast comes out, that shouldn't be doing anything. Yeah. And we should be getting health back, yep. As Iron Hand picks up a kill on the Go-Goat. So let's see what we have sitting in front of us now. Zapdos has to hit a Hurricane, which, I mean, Bill Gravers comes out, that's going to be the Great Tusk. As we are sitting at 50%. Either way, I think this is going to have to come down to Zapdos hitting a Hurricane. So 252, great. Earthquake. I am going to Drain Punch just to get health back, assuming that they don't just go for the obvious Earthquake. Iron Hands goes down to an Earthquake from Great Tusk. Uh, Iron Hands. Earlier, Great Tusk picks up a second kill. We can go out into Crawdont here. Aqua Jet. Yeah. Crawdon picks up another kill against Great Tusk. So this is Zapdos' last stand, and it has to hit a Hurricane to win. So because this is not going to be Discharge always kills here. The damage from Aqua Jet is needed for sure. 
Great Tusk goes down. I think we just always have to go for Aqua Jet here. Get it down below 50% as they roost, okay. I'm still gonna go for Aqua Jet. I mean, you can go for Static all you want. He's probably trying not to put himself in range of Ice Shard. If I had a guess. But I mean, but it still means that you have to land the hurricane, right? And if that's what if that's what the game comes down to, that's what the game comes down to. I can't be mad if they hit a hurricane or not. Crawdont goes down to Zapdos. And then it's Mammoth Swine versus Zapdos. We have to hit an Icicle Crash, they have to hit a Hurricane. It is as simple as that. Let's do it. Lock in. Hurricane misses. Is that what it's going to come down to? Icicle Crash hits. And knocks out the Zapdos. Is Oh, that was... Uh, I'm sorry that the Hurricane missed. I mean... But that was the only lock-in that either of us could do super close game one of the fifth season of the UNPL uh super hype that I did pick up the win there Mammoth Swine nicknamed Grandmaster D-Ray ended up taking him down and we are super excited about that so with that uh, I'm sure I could have played that better but I'm not gonna know until I go back and watch um I'm just living in the moment right now and then uh Hurricane miss definitely is what clinched it there. Well, obviously, we could have missed the Icicle Crash as well. So, it's the game we play for those misses. Unfortunately, it did come down to that. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. My name is Nick. I also go by Golden Guy. And we're going to get up on out here with a 1-0 victory over Grandmaster. Peace.